what's up sloth knitters this is the second installment of the simple mitten knit along it's simple or not simple depending on how you look at it so what i want to reiterate this time is we will be beginning the chart in this episode and if you're not doing the chart and you don't want to do color work that's totally fine just knit right on by just knit it disregard all the stuff about the chart and just follow along by knitting straight stockinette stitch right on through that um, the increases that I'm going to show you are just one one method. There's lots of ways to increase. That's just what I've chosen to do. I have another video that I will link up in the upper right hand corner of the video that will tell you how three different ways to increase. So you can pick what works for you. So let's get started. All right, we finished working our four plain rounds at the bottom of the first section on page two, and now we're at the top of page two where it says thumb gusset. So what we need to do is do the setup round, which says make one, knit one, make one. So in order to make one, I want to use a left leaning lifted increase, and I'll put a link to how to make various increases at, in the top right hand corner of the video here. What I'm gonna do though, is I gotta curl this around kind of so I can see what's going on. I need to use the stitch I've already knitted over here to lift from to make the left leaner. Because I'm making one, then I'm gonna knit this next one here. Then I'm gonna use a row down here from this stitch to make another. I can't do two lifted increases off the same stitch. So I need to use the leg that's down here on the cable on the stitch that's already been knitted so it's over here so this is going to look a little awkward here from the beginning um, but if you followed my lifted increases before what i want to do is grab a hold of this leg down here this one simply put it up on that left hand needle and i'm going to knit into the back of it because if you look at that it looks like a twisted stitch doesn't it so i'm going to knit into the back of that so that I orient it the proper way. This is a little bit awkward going around this cable, but we will make it work. Okay, so do the first one there, and then just knit the second stitch like normal. And now we want to make a right leaning increase, because I like to have, on thumbs, I like to have the right leaning increases pointed toward the middle of the thumb. So to do a right leaning increase, I'm just gonna go underneath this leg right here, and lift it up onto the left needle and knit right into that. Okay, rewind that if you need to and watch it again. Then you're just gonna knit this next stitch. Well, actually, we're gonna place our marker first because we lift, made one, knitted one, made one. We made one from the, the leg of the stitch, out of the stitch below the one that's on the needle. So if you need some more clarification on that, I do have a video about different making different increases. And again, I, I'll, I have linked that above and also I'll drop a link down below in the video description. Then we're just gonna knit to the end and we will have increased two stitches on this round. Okay, that's the setup round for the thumb gusset. Then let's look ahead for rounds number one and two, we're simply gonna knit. However, if you're doing the color work along with me, we're going to begin our color work chart. So I have printed the snowflake pattern that I want to use, and we'll go through that in just a moment. Um, I have a link down below where you should have a downloadable PDF for both sizes of snowflakes. The larger one is if you're knitting, if you've cast on enough stitches to accommodate, that size of chart on the back of the mitten, on the, you know, the back of your hand. And the smaller one, if you're doing um, a bulkier yarn, let's say with um, fewer stitches, that you've cast on fewer stitches, or a child size, then you're welcome to use the smaller size snowflake. Or alternatively, you can surf around on Pinterest or Google or whatever and find your own chart if you'd like. Um, because the premise, the principles of how we're gonna go about this will be the same regardless of the motif that you choose. So let me just finish knitting across this other side and get, getting back to my beginning of the round. And then we will use rounds one and two as rounds one and two, lines one and two from our chart. We've now completed the setup round here and we're going to begin the chart 
when we begin to round one and two, which is just plain knitting. If you're gonna knit this straight up and you're not doing the color work, then you can just carry on, knit rounds one and two just plain. If you're doing the color work with me, then either print the chart that you like off of the website, my website, pearltogether.com, or find something that you think will work off Pinterest or Google or whatever. Now, this first one is the larger size. That's what I'm going to use for mine. That's what I did on the sample. And you can tell here that it's, even though my printer's about to die, this is stitch one of row one, stitch two of row one, stitch three of row one, and so forth. Now, if you're a little confused about how to read a chart, you might go, um, Check on my video about that, which I also will link in the bottom in the video description. These are the rows going up, one through 25, and then these are the stitches going across. So we'll, this will all become more clear as we work through it slowly and slothfully. And then there's the smaller size, which kind of looks like a um, Space Invaders video game character. If you're from the early 80s, you remember that. But it does look better, I think, knitted than it does in chart form. You could always, if you're a little doubtful of that, you could always just knit yourself a little square of a swatch and see what you think. I'm gonna be using the bigger one for my size. Okay, so the next two rounds that we're gonna do on the pattern just simply to say knit. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to begin my chart. So this is row one, this is row two. One thing I'd like to point out is on all of these instructions, the individual instructions that are written out for different sizes of yarn that you're using, all of the increases will be worked on the third round. So rounds one and two are knit, and row th three, round three, is when we do our make ones, or increases. So what you need to do then is realize that every third round is an increase. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to look at my chart, and I'm gonna note that so that I don't lose track. So one and two are plain knits, the third round is going to, I'm going to put a little plus right next to the third one, the sixth round, the ninth, and so forth. And so that way I know that when I look at this chart, when I'm knitting row three, it's going to be an increase. So I like to kind of pre-plan that and just make sure that I keep myself on track in that way. So let's go ahead and begin with our color work on row round one. Now. I'm going to do this, my chart, on the back of the hand. So you are going to want to keep track of right and left, but we're going to knit this first one straight up where it will be the right hand, because if I'm knitting the thumb gusset here, the thumb will be here, so I'm, you know that'll be my right hand, and then the color work will be on the back. We will make an adjustment for that in the second mitten. All right, this is round one, and the, for the plain instructions, it just says simply to knit. So I'm just gonna knit through this first half, and then we'll begin our chart. All right, I've knitted across needle number one. Now I'm gonna turn my work, and I'm ready to begin the chart. If you're, again, if you're not knitting the color work with me, go ahead and follow the, the uh, pattern exactly, and you're just gonna knit your first two rows. Okay, when we follow a chart, we follow it in the same way that we knit. So when I knit, I go from right to left and from bottom to top. So this is the same way. So you're gonna have to excuse the fact that my printer is running out of ink, but you can see how many stitches each block designates one stitch. So I'm gonna, this first row is really easy. I'm gonna just knit across 11 stitches and then I'm gonna add a lighter contrasting color. Then I'm gonna knit to the end. So that's pretty straightforward. I've knitted across 11, and I know that my 12th stitch, according to my chart, needs to be the contrasting color. So in order to attach this contrasting yarn, I'm just going to simply lay it over here, leaving a good six inch tail, and I'm just gonna start knitting with it. And I'll snug it up, and I will weave it in to the back of my inside of the mitten later. I may choose to tie, tie something or secure it in a different way later on, but for now, We'll, we'll do that, we'll address that during the, the finish work portion of the series here. But right now I'm just gonna go ahead and knit it on. And it's gonna be kind of loose initially because I've just got it looped through there, um, but it will firm up after we carry on. So now I'm gonna drop this down and I'm gonna pick up my 
other color, the main color, and I'm going to continue knitting across my other 11 stitches to the end of the chart. And then that will complete round one. Now when I go along, I like to keep a stitch counter or make little, usually I just make little check marks or X's along the edge of my chart so that I know where I'm at in my chart. Um, this tail end, I'm just gonna, of the, the light colored yarn, I'm just gonna tuck that down in there and keep it out of my way. So I'm gonna go ahead, since I know that that was row round one, I'm just gonna make a little check mark. Or you can make an X or, you know, on this other side, even if you don't want it mixed up with your increase designations, whatever works for you. But now we're gonna do round two, which again is simply knitting through this first half give this a snug little pull after the first one and the second one so that you don't end up with a ladder between your cable and your working needle. Just slip your yarn, slip marker over, slip your marker over, I cannot speak today, and just knit across this first needle. And then we'll look at row two of our chart. Okay, one thing I wanna point out, when you're turning your work, you're flipping things over, you're you know shuffling around with your loops, now you're gonna have two colors coming off here. I like to have my contrasting yarn, which in this case is the lighter one. I like to have that over on the left, and then I like to have my main supply yarn on the right. That's just how I choose to do it. Um, you can have it however you want, but just be mindful that you're going to have to untangle things and keep stuff straight for a little bit. And you, you know, as with everything, you'll have to find which method of keeping things straight works best for you. But I like to have one on the left side and one on the right side. I'm ready to begin row two of my chart. And if you look at that, we know we're gonna knit 10 stitches because they're numbered here. So this block right here, let me make that closer for you. This is stitch number one, two, three, all the way across. This is stitch number 10. See that? So I know I'm gonna knit 10 of the darker color, then light, dark, light, I'm gonna alternate in that way. And I'll take that opportunity to show you how I like to hold my yarn and some different options for that. So first we're just gonna knit 10 of the main color straight across. Now it's time to add in a, one contrasting stitch. Now if you've crocheted or if you're a continental knitter, this will be super easy, easier for you. Um, I like to keep the contrasting color in my left hand and my main color in my right. And I simply go in as if to knit and I just lay that over and I pull it through. Then I simply knit the next one with my main color and then do that again with my contrasting color. Let me do that really slow. Go in as if to knit, catch that one. I, I'm not very good at it so I have to use my index finger to kind of hold it down and then pull that through like just a regular knit stitch. All right, when we began with our color on our first stitch, we did not have to carry the yarn, the contrasting yarn, all the way around because we came right back to that same, well, close to that same vertical point in our mitten. However, the next row that we come to, which is gonna be round, round or row three, we're gonna have to start our next lighter colored stitch way over here. So I'm gonna show you how you need to carry your yarn all the way around the circle, all the way around the back of your knitting so that we can have the lighter color yarn positioned on the right hand side where we're gonna need it to knit each row of our chart. So if you're comfortable having yarn in both hands, then that's an easy way to, easier way to go about it. And these are called floats. When this yarn just floats along the back, it floats along the back of your work and it, it doesn't come forward to create a stitch until it's needed. It just kind of literally you know floats along the back. But it's important to tack it in. It's important not to have big, big um, strands just carrying along in the back that you might snag your finger on when you put the mitten on. So the way that I go about this is go in, go in as if to knit the next stitch, and I simply lay that yarn over the top. I lay it over the top of my right needle. You can even pin it down a little bit if you want. Wrap that, your regular knit stitch, and then just let that fall back over. And what that does is it, it lays it 
over the top of this yarn so that we can trap it with the next stitch. And you'll see how that looks in just a moment. Now we're gonna knit the next one. And if you'll notice, this yarn's gonna wrap around over the top of that contrasting yarn. We're not pulling it through at all, but we've trapped it now. See, we pinned it down. And that will secure that float along the back. So we'll next one, the next time you just lay, lay it up over the working yarn, or sorry, the right hand needle, wrap your knit stitch, and just let everything fall off. And you can see how that lays it over the working yarn. And then the next knit stitch that we do, we'll trap it, okay? So you can see how now we've secured it twice. Now, if you're not comfortable holding your yarn in that way, like you're not a continental knitter or a crocheter, that's fine. You don't have to do that. You can just carry along like this and simply pick it up, lay it over, wrap, let it back down, and knit. And if, it, if you notice it's getting a little loose, just give it a gentle tug. You don't want to pull it tight, tight, because that will make your knitting puckery and it'll mess up your gauge and your tension. So you just want to have it carrying along in the back loosely, not too loose, you don't, but you know, you see what I'm saying? You don't want to pull it really tight. Just lay it back over and knit. So go in, and now we're gonna hold this down gently and let that stitch trap it, the next knit stitch. So you're gonna go in, lift this up on your right needle, go ahead, wrap your knit stitch, and put this back down. That just sets us up in order to trap it with the next stitch. See, did you see how I just kind of grabbed it and pulled that over and that traps it. So what you've done there, see you can't, it shows through on a little bit of an occasion. If you see that happening, see that got pulled a little tight. You can take a little needle or a little darning needle and just, um, you know, even that out, pull that back out so that you can't see it on the front side. Now I'm going to continue floating along that contrasting yarn all the way till I get back to when I need it again. So you might think that's a little bit tedious, um, but that also makes your mitten warmer and it also, you know, and then I know it's all secure. So that takes a little while, but we only have 25 rows of our, actually 23 rows of our chart in total. So we're not doing the whole entire mitten in that way. We're just doing these, you know, 23 rows for the chart. Now, I'm pulling this up and over because I know my last one trapped it, so I need that I need the lighter colored yarn now to be up and over the right needle when I wrap. And that's especially important to be mindful of this on the side joins. And so that's, yeah, up and over. And maybe I just did that. Yep, you know what I need to do there is just simply knit it and trap it because I did the up and over when I first started. Okay, now lay it out over the top of the right needle, and then the next one, after we slip the marker, will be our trapping stitch, okay? So we have our up and over, and then our next one is our trapping. If, if you'll notice, if you can hold your yarn like you're crocheting or knitting continental and have it on your left index finger, you can just kind of move it back and forth and that does make it go pretty quickly, really, if you can just move it back and forth in order to carry it along in that way. But it's no big deal if that's not comfortable for you. You can, you know, if you don't like this all over your fingers, you can simply just grab a hold of it and move it back and forth as you're knitting, that's fine. It's just, this is my habit. Okay, so just finish all the way around and then I'll show you, we'll begin round three. All right, I'm about to begin row three, and remember row three is an increase round. So what we need to do is make one, knit to the marker, and make another one. So I like to use the left and right leaning, or sorry, lifted leaning increases. And again, there's a link to how to perform those down below. So I would like for, for this first one to lean to the left. So it's leaning up toward the tip of what will be the thumb. So what I'm gonna do is simply knit this first stitch and then I'm gonna go down below and pick up the leg of this one and knit right into that. I'm knitting into the back of that so that it's not twisted. Now keep in mind, I gotta carry along my uh, 
light colored yarn as well. I do, I do go across the increase with this because it's difficult to incorporate that into the increase. So when I go into the next one, I'm gonna lay that over and I'm gonna give it a good little bit of a tug because it's pulling from this back cable and I want it to be in there pretty well. And then the next stitch should go ahead and trap that down. And then I'm gonna do a right leaning increase so I'm gonna grab the leg right here below this marker, pull that up, knit right into it, and slip the marker. So I've increased two stitches now in between here. I had three and I had five. And I'm going to keep in mind that I need to carry this along with me as well. So that's a little bit um, tedious through the increasing portion, but you'll get a, you'll get a rhythm going. And then we're just gonna carry on trapping that, laying it over and trapping it as we go so that we carry along our floats behind. Now, if I wasn't gonna do every single one, I would say I would lay that over and then I would knit two before I trapped rather than just one. And then, see now I don't, I've lost track of where I am because I usually do every single one. Um, that's just going to make a longer line of a float behind. Now, like I said earlier, okay, what that'll do is if you can alternate, if you can stagger or alternate the point at which you lay it over and trap it as you go through these rows, then it's less likely to show through from the front side when you have a lighter colored yarn. It's going to be less likely to be noticeable. So, but you have to decide what works for you and you know whether these are for, whether you're knitting this for yourself and you don't wear a lot of rings or whether you're knitting them for somebody with long fingernails and a lot of rings or knitting them for kids or whatever. Um, I'm just showing you the way I do it, but there are certainly lots and lots of ways. Whoops, there we go. That's a trap one, not a lay it over one, so. And you know what, if you miss one and you end up doing every two stitches, it's not a crisis. So once we get across here, we will have done needle one of round or row three, and then we're gonna start the chart on the back side of this. Whoops. I have trouble controlling the tension with my left hand as much. I don't practice with holding the yarn in my left hand very much because I'm, you know, I'm not a crocheter. Um, so I know that that's when I laid it over. So the next stitch on the on the new needle will be a trapping one. So you can you can see that when you do your magic loop shuffle and turn your work. Now we're on the color work side, and this just snuck out. So I'll push this back down in. All right, shuffle around your magic loop. I'll put a link down below if you're unsure about magic looping. All right, lay that. I'm going to get that contrasting yarn set up there for the trap. And I'm going to make sure to, again, every time you go to a new needle, I pull that over, give this a, a gentle, I don't want that tight because that will cause a pucker. Um, but I do want, I want to give that a good little tug because that's going to suck up that cable and help prevent any kind of gap or ladder between. Okay, so then we're gonna carry on with keeping our floats. And we need to check our chart too. So I'm on row three, and I'm gonna have, let's look at how many plain dark colored stitches. I'm gonna do seven, and then the eighth one is the light. And seven, now I'm gonna do my contrasting one. Now I will go ahead and just knit this and, and pick it through like this. But if you're not comfortable doing that, it's totally okay to do this with your other hand, let go of your main color, pick up the contrasting, and knit as you normally would. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. It takes a little bit longer, but you know, that's okay. We're not knitting an entire Fair Isle sweater here, so do what, you know, do what works for you, is all I'm saying. And so if I wasn't gonna hold my yarn like that, I could just hang on to this, Lay that over like we're supposed to be. Knit that, put it back, knit. And I'm doing three here of the dark. This is my trapping one. 
right? There's two. And then here comes three. Whoops, that's the tail. I need to push that down in there better. Get that out of the way. Okay, now we're gonna have one that we just knit, so we don't have to trap it because we're gonna knit it. Okay, that took care of that secure securing action for us. And then I could do another three, checking my chart. So there's one. Let me get a hold of my working yarn again and start back with my laying it over and trapping method here. Okay, so there's three of the dark, and then I'm gonna have one. So I'll go ahead and pick it since I'm in position to do that. And then I'm gonna carry on to the end of my round because that was all the color that was required for row three of my chart. Okay, so I hope that makes sense and you're able to work through the chart. I'm gonna go ahead and do a few rows and get it established and then you'll be able to see better what things are gonna look like. Mostly what I need to tell you is, you know, be mindful of your tension, make sure nothing's pulled really tightly, except for where I'm pulling, you know, I'm snugging up my cables at the junction. Um, but you just wanna make sure nothing's pulled really tight on the back side of your, your stranded work here, because it will cause puckering and tension issues. So just be careful about that. So let me knit a few rows and then I'll check back in with you and show you how the color and pattern is starting to emerge. One thing I wanted to point out when we've gotten to row five here is you're gonna you know knit two with the main color contrasting, color main color contrasting and so forth. But now we're gonna begin to have larger sections of the contrasting color. But I wanted you just to know that you need to carry along the main color along the back doing the floats in the same way as we have before. It's just that you're carrying along now the main color rather than the contrasting color along the back. But it's still important to, uh, you know, do the same method is just going to be reversed. All right, and now, just like before, I'm gonna knit with the contrasting color now, and it's more comfortable for me to do it in my right hand. Whatever color that you're knitting along with, you need to make sure that you secure the other one, just like we have been all along. So I just wanted to point that out, that see, now I brought that forward, and now that will be secured behind, because I have three of the lighter colored now. And then I'll have to knit three with my main color. Okay, so there's two, and I probably don't wanna, and I'll bring that up now. When I knit into the next one, I'll bring that up over the top, knit into it, let it fall back, just like we've been doing all along. So what happens is I'm carrying along, see there's the darker color float right there that we carried, and then here's the, the lighter one. So you just wanna alternate, and you know if you need to switch hands to do that, that's okay, that's totally okay, just do whatever works best for you. And now I need to have three of the lighter colored ones together, so there's one, and I'll bring this up and over and secure that, and I'll knit or do my wrap and then let that down and bring it through. And then that will be pinned down and secured and tacked down. All right, now I'm at the beginning of row six, and I'm gonna wanna do my increases again. So again, do the method of increasing that works best for you, but I'm choosing to do a left-leaning lifted increase on this first stitch, so I'm just gonna knit the first one. And then it's a left leaner, so I'm gonna go down. I have those stitches on the needle, the one right below here. I wanna go down to the one right next to that white yarn and pull that up, knit into the back of it so it reorients the stitch properly on the needle. Okay, there, and then knit across to the marker. Whoops, while I'm knitting across, see there, I forgot. I gotta carry along that light color while I'm going across, don't I? So I'll go ahead and put that over on my right side so I don't forget about it. Let me pull that over. Go ahead and wrap, drop that off. Yeah, so that's why this is a little bit challenging is because you're doing your increases, but you still have to remember to carry that along. And that's trapped now. Okay, so you still want to remember to carry that along behind, even though you're 
doing some other stuff at the same time. That's okay. And just keep in mind, you only have to do those increases every third row. But I am on row six, and that's multiple of three. So it is time for me to be doing that. Okay, so I'm going to carry along with the front, which is just knitting and carrying my float along. And then do the next row of my chart when I get there. Another little tip I want to point out is often I'll use a post-it note or sometimes I'll put the whole chart inside a plastic sleeve protector and then use either a sticky note or a painter's tape, you know, that blue tape that you can stick and unstick many times. And that's what I use to just keep my place on my chart and go up so I can just look at it as a, at a glance as I'm knitting along. All right, I've just finished row 12 of the chart. You can start to see the the snowflake pattern emerging. Um, I do have some stuff showing through right there and I'll try to, you know, I'll try to stretch that out a little bit and see if I pulled something a little tight on the back or, or whatever. I'll try to, you know, shuffle that around and see if I can fix that. Um, you can definitely tell this side is thicker um, and you can see, see the inside. I have some floats that are a stitch or two longer than some others. I am trying to stagger where the trapping occurs um, to try to mitigate how much of the white shows through to this side. And so that's one technique is to just to kind of alternate where you're trapping down the yarn so that it doesn't show through as much. So clearly that's what happened here is I trapped in the same spot two rows in a row and that's what happened. So I'm not too concerned about it, but, but that is the reason for it. Um, so you can alternate, you know, doing every other row or doing every third row and see if that, that helps. So, you know, you just don't want long, long floats that are, like I said, going to catch on a, a ring or a fingernail or, or whatever. So I have just finished row 12 and that was an increase. So you want to count the number of stitches that you have between the beginning of the round and your marker. Because if you look on your pattern, it does mention... Um, when to switch and how many times you need to do that. After, your, after you finish your thumb gusset, then you'll just knit plain and you'll stop doing that increasing. So that's gonna depend on the yarn that you're using. So for me, I'm gonna continue increasing every third round until I have 17 stitches between the beginning of the round and my marker. So what that number is for you obviously depends upon what size and what yarn you're using. So carry on with that, knitting the chart and be keeping in mind how many stitches you have between the marker. If you're, you know, and then that's your thumb gusset. And then I'll show you how to put on your waist yarn and separate off those stitches when I get there in just a few moments. So if you're doing the color work with me, well done, carry on with that. And if you're not, just keep knitting round and round, doing your increases every third row until you get to that number designated by your pattern. All right, I've just finished row 21 of the chart, and I'm not quite finished with it. There's a little bit, a few rows left, but um, I'm pointing out that I'm at the point where I have 17 stitches here between the beginning of the round and my marker. And so that's where I need to take a look at my pattern. And I'm gonna need to, during this next round, I'm gonna separate the thumb gusset stitches from the rest. So let's take a look at what it says to do. So. I had circles this because I'm working with sport weight or using the DK. And so I have 17 stitches between the beginning of the round and the marker. So the next thing I want to do is place the stitches that I just mentioned on waist yarn. Remove the marker, cast on one stitch, and knit to the end of the round. Okay, what does that mean exactly? That means I need some waist yarn. Okay, for a waist yarn, I just have a length of, I don't know, it's probably 12 or 14 inches of contrasting color. It's a little bit bigger, it's um, worsted weight, that I've put onto a darning needle. And all I need to do now is transfer these 17 stitches onto here. So when I do that, I slip as if to purl, and I just slip them off on there. Now, slipping as if to purl just transfers them straight over. If you slip as if to knit, meaning you go into the stitch like you're knitting it, that's going to actually turn it 180 degrees, and you don't want to twist a stitch. So just go put them all on here, and you want to cut enough waist yarn so you have enough, you know, obviously enough sticking out on each end that 
even if you set your work down, you're not going to, it's not going to pull out. You're not going to lose it like I almost did that. And we're just gonna put all of those onto waste yarn for the time being until we're ready to pick up those stitches and knit the thumb. So it's just a way of holding on to them until we're ready to do that, okay? All right, simple enough. And then, so I've got all those on there, and then I'm going to remove the marker, was the next thing it said. And then it said cast on one stitch. I'm gonna cast on one stitch onto the needle I just finished knitting. Okay, I wanna cast on one stitch onto here. Now the way I go about that is just a simple backwards loop or a half hitch is really what it is. So I just lay it over my finger like that and turn it so that the yarn coming off the needles on the bottom and I just make a loop like that and I put it right on there and that's it. Okay, so I cast on one stitch, and now I'm gonna knit to the end of the round. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off, and I'm gonna work my shuffle my magic loop around. All this extraneous stuff, um, those are just tails, we'll work that in. One thing you're gonna wanna do though, is I'm not done with my chart, so I need to maintain that, and this is similar to my it's a little bigger in diameter than my contrast yarn, so maybe I should have picked a different color to put my thumb stitches on. Um, but I had that's what I had handy, so that's okay. So all I'm gonna do now is go in and get my working yarn off the back side. All right, I'm gonna bring that up, draw that up, because what we're doing now is we're closing this gap and we're making our thumb hole. So it's important that you pull this up here, wrap it around, pull it up pretty tight. And that is the backward loop that we've cast on. And that is going to be a little tight to knit into when we come back to it, but we will make it work. All right, now I'm going to knit to the end of the round. I'm also going to be mindful to carry my float with me while I do that. And I'm going to carry on knitting to the knitting just like we have been back and forth, carrying this other yarn with, with me. So laying that up over, dropping it back, and then the next stitch is tacking it, trapping it, and pinning it down. So I've been alternating whether I do every other every other one or every third one, and you can do that too, to help mitigate the chance of that lighter yarn showing through. And I do have some spots, admittedly, where I'm gonna go back in and, like you can see, that's a kind of a bad one. And I think what I need to do is just go take a darning needle on this other side, find exactly where that was, and just, you know, even things out, right? So that actually that that helped a little bit. So I'm thinking a lot of that, that some of that might block out too. Um, and admittedly, I didn't do as good a job as I could have with making sure that the point at which those floats are trapped are staggered. That's really the key to not having that that show through. So that's, um, yeah, so we'll have to go work on that. All right, now we just need to continue knitting round and round and round until the piece measures however many inches from the end of the thumb gusset. I'm going to continue knitting my mitten up and up and up from this point, from the end where I have the waist yarn all the way up, and I'm gonna finish off my chart. I only have two more rows till I finish my chart. I am at the top of there where I just had that one last white light colored stitch to finish. And now I'm at the beginning of my round. So I just wanted to show you, I'm going to go ahead and be done with this contrasting light colored yarn. I've already cut it. And what I usually do is I just tie a little half hitch here, which is not super secure on its own. Um, but then I'm going to go back in later and I'm going to weave this in and secure that better. But I just wanted to tie a little half hitch there and just to snug that up. And then I'm just gonna continue knitting around and around and around until I reach that four and a half inches or four and a quarter inches or whatever it is for your size where you need the length for the fingers of your mitten. So you're just gonna do however many inches it says, measuring from the big top of the thumb gusset where your waist yarn is. So charts completed, the gusset is on waist yarn, the thumb gusset. 
Um, yep, I have some little spots like that to go back and see if I can pull those through on the inside and fix that. But you know, it looks really good. So you just continue knitting round and round and round. Okay, so good luck with the chart. Let me know if you have any questions about that. If you're just knitting it plain, then you should be home free. But certainly let me know if you have any questions about the thumb gusset or the increases or how any of that's going to work. So I look forward to seeing you next time when we will carry on up the hand portion of the mitten and then do the decreasing around the top. We may also go ahead and pick up the stitches for the thumb and go ahead and complete that. Take care. Holler if you have any questions. Be sure to leave a comment below, like, and subscribe. Join the Facebook group, Ravelry group, all that good stuff. All right. As always, I appreciate you watching.